I want to tell you guys some things that go on in church. Some things that if you've never been to a church or if you've barely been to a church and you're maybe invited to one and you're at the back and you're observing, chances are you will wonder what in the world world are these people doing? If you haven't been a Christian for long, you're going to wonder at some of the stuff that happens and some of the things that they say. I grew up in a church that uh, we sang a lot of hymns. We had a lot of biblical teaching, but there wasn't like people didn't raise their hands in church or um, pray in the Holy Spirit and all that kind of stuff. So the first time I was introduced to raising your hands, I'm just going to tell you a bunch of stuff and hopefully you can take it. If you think I'm just off the wall, it doesn't matter. So when I was like 10, I went to this Bible camp and that was the first summer I had an experience with God. I just knew he was real and he showed up in my cabin in the middle of the night. Anyway, that week was incredible. But during worship that week, we were singing just camp songs, you know, fun songs to the Lord. And then there was a, like some slower things and stuff. And all of a sudden, I'm not kidding you, my hands went up like like this, okay? My hands were all of a sudden up, both of them. And I looked at them and I just, I put them back down. I was like, what in the world? It was like the Lord put up my hands and I put them back down. I was like, I can't raise my hands. And everybody's watching me. What was that? So fast forward a few years and I went to a couple church meetings with a friend of mine. One of them had a group in from the States that they moved in the gifts of the spirit. Okay, so this is what you'll see in some services. You will see people that will anoint others with oil. And this is from scripture. They will take a vial of oil and they'll put it on their finger and they'll maybe like mark your forehead with a cross or something or or they'll put oil on somewhere, maybe um, a part of your body that's not well. And that's called anointing somebody with oil. Anointing is like, it kind of, it means like being rubbed into and being smeared into like sunscreen. You're rubbing it in or like a lotion or something. That's anointing. In the New Testament, they said if anybody's sick, you're supposed to call the elders of the church together and they will anoint this person with oil and the prayer of faith will raise up the sick person. And so that's one thing that you'll see, anointing with oil. You will see people laying hands on other people. And when I say laying hands on them, I'm saying they put, they're putting their hands on other people and praying for them. And so sometimes it'll be on their head. Sometimes it'll be on a specific area of their body that's hurting because God said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So that's why we do it. To the world, that that might look a little like, why are you touching me? But we are the hands and feet of Jesus. And there's something about the Lord coming through your hands. Like sometimes the anointing, you'll even feel it. Like your palms will get warm. Man, I was in a service uh, last year where the minister at the front said to go put your hand on somebody around you, somebody that's sick around you. They're, they're dealing with whatever. So the people that had health problems and issues, they put their hands up. I honestly, at that point, I was like, I feel like I have zero faith. I'm just going to go put my hand on that person because they told me to. And you guys, I put that ha my hand on this lady. She had an issue on her, um, it was her knee her eye, one other part of her body. Anyway, as I put my hand on her eye, like, or on her knee, um, she was just receiving from the Lord and, and people were praying all across the auditorium, hundreds of people. And this lady gets healed. Like her knee doesn't hurt anymore. Her back, I think, was it her back? Anyway, and I just kept my hand on her. And I was like, well, this is super cool. This has nothing to do with me. It's, it was a reminder to me. God was like, hey, Nancy, it's not, you're the, it's not you that's doing the healing. It's my healing power flowing through your hand. That's why I said, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And this lady, God healed her. She was so happy. She was crying, just weeping because she was in so much pain and now she was better. And it, it just, I was so I mean, all the praise goes to God, right? Because it, it just is like, thank you, God, that you that we do these things, that we anoint people with oil or that we lay hands on the sick and they recover. Other things that will happen is in a meeting where the spirit of God is so heavy, his presence and his anointing is so heavy in there. Nobody even has to touch you and your knees will just be so weak that you just drop to the floor. Now, are you going to get hurt? No, 
you won't get hurt because if it's God, he won't hurt you. It's called falling out in the spirit. Or some people call it slain in the spirit. I just say it like falling out in the spirit because slain seems kind of interesting. But when they fall out in the spirit like that, you have an intense moment with God. He just ministers to you and you're not able to do a thing. You just can't do a thing. Uh, one of my friends, she just went out one day and she said she could not move her arms. She couldn't move her legs. She was pinned to the floor. And she said God was just cleansed her. She started weeping and crying. And God gave her this vision of what was going to take place in the very near future. And so he ministered to her like that in a way that was such a, a life-changing moment. Like it's just, um, yeah. Anyway, so those are so, so okay. Just think about this. Okay, if you're if you're listening right now, you're probably like, what in the world? I am not going to that church. Um, when the Holy Spirit is allowed to move, he will have you on the edge of your seat. If you'll notice, everywhere that Jesus went, he would lay hands on people. He would touch people. Some people would touch him, touch the hem of his garment. This one blind guy, he spit on the ground, made some mud and put it on the man's eyes and, he, and then the man washed it off and he could see. Okay, if, if you ever went to a church where they are sp <laughs> making like this goop and putting it, I mean, would you go to that church? It just is funny to me because Jesus did everything in a different way all the time. He cast out devils, cast out demons. And that stuff is as real today as it was back in his day. He would speak to the devil on the inside of a person, like this person has a demon or something, and he'd say, get out of him, come out of him now. And the demon would come out and it would, like one of the stories is like the kid was wallowing and foaming with his mouth. These are real things, guys. These are real situations and circumstances that happen and we can close our eyes to it all we want and have these blinders on thing i'm not i'm not going i'm not i'm not going in that direction that can be for those other people over there this is weirdo stuff but guys it is so much fun to see somebody get healed it's addicting to see some demon come out of somebody they get so free and so filled up with the love of God and they get free. They're no longer in torment by these demonic spirit beings and stuff. Like they just get free. You have to have a solid, solid foundation in the word. You have to know that number one, it is okay to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And, and when God said in the Bible that these signs will follow them that believe in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Like this stuff is real. I don't know about you, but I have such a hunger and desire in my heart to see people set free, to see them live for God, to see them understand what's going on. After you have those moments with the Lord, those experiences, the laughter, the joy, the healing, the whatever happened to you, just praise God and thank him for what he did and just be open to receive again from him. And maybe he'll want you to lay hands on somebody in the next service. The key is to do exactly what he tells you to do, just like Jesus, okay? So like Jesus said, I only do what I hear my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. If he tells me to say something, that's what I'll say. If he tells me to do something, that's what I'll do. He was very directed by God. Be led of the Spirit in this stuff. This is why it's so important to know how to hear God, to know what he's saying, to have a biblical foundation so you're like, yeah, this is this is right. And you have the inner witness saying, yeah, this is right. Because is there counterfeit? Oh, yeah. Yeah, people will have some experiences or they'll watch somebody with some, you know, something great happen to them and they'll try and drum it up on their own, but you can't do it. It's impossible. It's as the spirit wills. So anyway, I just told you some of what I've seen. I don't know. I love going to different churches, different services, prayer meetings. I just came from a prayer meeting today that there were some ladies travailing in the spirit, which means like the groanings, the, the utterances from the spirit that come up deep from the wells within you. And they're praying and they're, they're birthing out. If you've ever heard that term, they're birthing out like prayer 
lays the foundation for things to happen. And so they're praying out these things in the spirit that are to come. After you get around this stuff, you understand their groanings and their utterances and it gets loud and they, oh man, they're praying in the spirit and this stuff. And then all of a sudden you have like a note of victory or you're on the inside, you're just like, oh, it's done. And, and something was taken care of in the spirit realm. This stuff is super fun. God's fun, okay? He's cool. It's not about checking the box on Sunday morning. There is so much more to it. You have Jesus with you all week, 24 seven, and he will lead you into some situations and some spots to go pray for this person, to go speak to this person, tell them that I love them, to lay hands on this one over here and all of a sudden they, they drop to the floor. Oops, did you do that? No, hopefully not, don't push them down. But there's just some things that happen that are nothing to be afraid of. If there's any counterfeit, the Lord will tell you on the inside that you'll have a nudging like that's not right. I'm just really thankful for that. Do things get out of hand sometimes? They can, they can, which is why people have shied away from this stuff, which is, oh, I'm not touching that. You know, the, they went crazy over there. It takes somebody to be led by God to lead a meeting like that where where it's in order and, and things are flowing properly and somebody's not calling attention to themselves or magnifying themselves it should all magnify the lord uh, it should draw attention to jesus it should minister to the people if they're getting healed if they're getting set free if they're getting delivered praise god praise god for that anyway you might not have heard of like 90 percent of what i just told you right now but this is the kind of stuff that happens in some churches in some meetings, in some conferences, in um, different places. So it's just for your information. So if you ever see anybody like falling out in the spirit, be like, oh, I've heard of this before. <laughs> and if you start laughing unexpectedly and thinking, uh, what is wrong with me? Um, that's called being drunk in the Holy Ghost. So I love it. I like that God is just different and he will do things that make you extremely uncomfortable. But exciting times with God. Okay, uh, I'll, just, I'll just leave it there for you. So happy day.